India. He was about to commit a suicide and somebody gave him a, a Bible and the Bible was, because of wind, the Bible was just open and the passage he went to, the peace I leave with you, my peace are given to you and with that passage he got saved and become a very great man after that. He did a lot of things there and he was a very, very famous man after that. The gospel is power of God unto salvation. It is, it is so important that we spread the gospel, the good news of Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, I won't give a title now, just um, for my message. I, I was reading this um, chapter once again, and it's chapter John chapter 14. I came across a verse that got my attention. Uh, thanks to the Holy Spirit, you know, brought my attention to the verse. And, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, was preparing to leave his disciple and going to get offered on the cross for the sins of this world. And he was telling and uh, telling his disciple and preparing his disciple uh, and then and, and just telling them the great evidence of their devotion and love for him uh, would be found in their obedience to his commandments. He emphasized that this act of obedience would hold, would hold greater significance than any tear that shed for him. Today as we read this passage, let's go to John chapter 14 verse 15. It's a very, very simple verse, but but it is it is so much, so much to ring out of this verses. This verse. John chapter 14, verse 15. And the Bible says, If you love me, keep my commandments. And today, as we read this passage, the Holy Spirit echoes the same message to us, the New Testament Christians, through John chapter 14, verse 15. That if you love me, keep my commandments. The great evidence we can give to Jesus Christ that we love him, that we keep his commandment. And I got stumped, you know, when, when I read this. And a question came to my mind that, that do I love Jesus Christ the way it should be? And I'm not saying to you, and I'm, I'm posing this question to you as well today, do you love Jesus Christ? And I'm not saying that you don't, but I'm just asking this question. Sometimes I don't, know, don't even know that uh, myself, do I love Jesus? I do say from my mouth that I love Jesus, but sometimes I look at my life and wonder, do I, love, do I really love Jesus the way it should be? A lot, lot of people sitting in this in here, and they will watch online and and they're, they're watching online this time, with sincerity of their heart, they will say, we love Jesus Christ, Brother Pearson. But is that love of Jesus Christ influencing their life with any, anything? It has changed their life for Jesus Christ? Has doing anything in their life? And Bible says, when we, become an, when, we, when we got saved, we become a new creature. Are we a new creature in Jesus Christ? That's, that's the question uh, we, we have for tonight and let's see, let's see what the Lord expects us to do as we, as we study this time. And, and if you do love Jesus Christ, are you actively living his commandments at this time, every day? So the question I'm going to ask again, do you love Jesus Christ? That's the title of a message, do you love Jesus? And Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So why, why, we, sh why mo we must love Jesus Christ? Who is Jesus? Is he a religious leader? Is he, is he a prophet as Muslim says? Is he a good teacher when, when Nicodemus said to him, Rabbi, we know that a teacher come from God. But 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 says, He's a God manifest in flesh. Let's see the magnificence of Jesus Christ. Let's open the Bible to Genesis chapter 1. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3 says, God said, there be a light. There was a light. Verse 6, God said, there be a firmament. 
in the midst of the water. Verse 9 said, God said, let the, let the water under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. Let the dry land appear it also. And get God said and things come to existence. In Genesis, God spoke and world uh, came to existence. This, this, this Jesus Christ is the same God who spoke creation to it, its being. He is the creator of heaven and earth. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 and 17 says, Who is the image of invincible God, in, invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible invisible whether they be thrones or dominion or principalities or power all things are created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist he is the creator of heaven and earth he is the creator of everything jesus display his power and maj majesty in isaiah chapter 40 verse 12 um, you don't have to turn there but uh, isaiah chapter 40 was uh, 12, he, he, he's, he's a mighty, he's an almighty God. Isaiah 40 verse 12 says, Who hath measured the water in hollow of his hand. He's a big God. And meted the heaven with a span. He comprehended the dust in the measure, weigh the mountain in scales, and hill in balance. He's an almighty God. In, in Isaiah chapter 6 and Revelation chapter 4, let, let's go to Isaiah chapter 6. Jesus Christ, the same Lord who received the praises from angelic beings in Isaiah chapter 6 and Revelation chapter 4. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1, and the Bible says, In the year that King Uzziah died, his small k king died, and I saw... The Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And above it, seraphim. Seraphims are the fiery serpents. Each one had six wings. Between he covered his face. Between he covered his feet. Between he did fly. And one cried to another, back and forth, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And they were crying back and forth and, and say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And when they're crying like that, look what happened in verse 4. And the post of the door moved, and the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. So he's a holy God. And Revelation, so this is before Jesus Christ came into into this world is thousand years before roughly thousand years before and god shows us in revelation which is future revelation chapter 4 verse 8 and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him and they were full of eyes within and they were they rest not day and night saying holy 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 the lord god the lord god almighty which was which is and which is to come he is the creator, he is almighty God, he is, the, he is the Lord God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 says, For you know the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, though he be rich, he is a rich God. Yet for your sake he became poor that you through his poverty might be rich. So this God came into this world because something happened. And, uh, and because of that, he has to come into this world to, to save us from our, our sins. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful for the day, grateful for your grace, your mercy, your kindness, your goodness, your love, your care. Lord, as we, as we sit down here and praise you, thank you who you are, what you are, how, how big you are, how gracious you are. Despite of all that, Lord, we're so grateful for that. Grateful for your love and care for us, Lord. Your unconditional grace, Lord, which renewed every day for us. I'm so thankful for that, Lord. As we sit here, praise, thank you, Lord. Help us to have the right heart, Lord. Cleanse us from all the, all the worldly things which 
can take our heart and mind away from you, Lord. Help us to give praises which you deserve because you're worthy of it, Lord. Help me, Lord, to preach the way you want me to, Lord, teach what the way you want me to, Lord. Let the honor and glory be yours. Ask in your holy name, prayer. According to Genesis chapter 3, the enter of entry of the sin and its consequence. The sin entered into this world when Adam sinned against God. And according to Romans chapter 5 verse 12, Wherefore, because of that, as by one man sin entered into this world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So because of Adam's sin, with the sin is entered into this world, and because of the sin, that there is a death, death, death everywhere. Death, death passed upon all men. For that all have sinned. So man becomes sinful by nature, and God was separated from him. So holy God separated from sinful man. But God made a plan of salvation, and he sent his only, only begotten son, who came into this world, according to First Timothy, he came into this world to seek and he came into this world to save sinners. Galatians chapter four, verse four. If you want to turn, please. Galatians chapter four, verse four. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law. And John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. The John 3 16 shows that God loved for us and he gave his only begotten son for our salvation because God knew that where we're heading towards and because of our sins, we will end up all end up in a place called lake of fire. And God's desire for us is that no one should perish, but all should come to repentance. That is the God of heaven. Let's see the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. He lived a 33 and, and a half year and lived a blameless, sinless, perfect life. He lived a life which is pleasing to his father. And one day he went to the cross with our sins and, and he, he hung himself on the cross and died. He was buried and rose back again third day. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, For he had, he God, had made him, Jesus Christ, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made righteousness of God in him. And I want you to see uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 33 and 34. Mark chapter 10, verse 33 and 34. And Jesus is, saying, Jesus is speaking here, and he is, he is foretelling his death, what is going to happen? And saying, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priest and unto scribe. So this is the one, this is the Jews, scribe and priest. He came to his own, but his own received him not. He was rejected by him. After all this rejection, um, and, and, and the verse says, that They shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to Gentiles. And verse 34, man, this is just, it touched my heart big time. Knowing all this, you know, verse 34 says, and, and they shall mock him. The holy God, which angelic beings are praising holy, 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 24-7, he's been mocked by, the, by his, cre his creation, all his creatures, sun scourged, beaten into... Uh, he was beaten so badly that even the human can't do to any, any human. And watch the next one, spared upon the holy God. This holy Jesus has to bear all this because it's worth it, because he has to deliver us from our, our sinful state. And shall kill him, and third day he shall rise again. Knowing all this rejection, you know, God of universe, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Lord Jesus Christ, he didn't reject us. He could have said that time, that is enough, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just going. I can't do this. But he went to the cross because he has to save us from the plenty of our sins. He was so, so, 
so so much. And lot lot of people say, lot lot of scientists I was I was reading, and they say that uh, Jesus Christ didn't hung on the cross, and now he he hung on the cross, but he didn't praise the hand. The nail, if if you praise the hand of the nail of any person, um, he will he'll the flesh will tear off. Let's let's go to Hebrews ten verse five. Let's see what what Bible says about this. Wherefore, when he cometh in, into the world, he says, "Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me." This body, God made a custom designed body for Jesus Christ to dwell. And if scientist says that man can't hung on the can't hung hung on the cross, his um, his hand will tear. Yeah, we, uh, my hand will tear. Your hand will tear. But this custom designed body for Jesus Christ to be there because God prepared this body for Jesus Christ to live and to be crucified with that body. And if if it says a lot, lot of people, a lot of preachers says that he got um, nailed in in the wrist, but but Bible says he got nailed in the hand. When it's nailed in the hand, it's nailed in the hand. Let's let's believe the Bible every word which is written there. Because this is the special body God prepared for him. Mark chapter fifteen verse thirty three and thirty four says, and the sixth hour there was a dark there there was there there was and 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 when the sixth hour was come there was a darkness of the whole land until the ninth hour. You know this God who who said I am the light of the world, the God who spoke the light into existence, and it is very it marvels you know that he there was a darkness and he has to go through the darkness because one day. Me and you don't have to go through the darkness. He saved us from going into the darkness by going himself in the darkness. And next one he says, and at the ninth hour Jesus cried unto, uh, cried with a loud voice, saying, "Allah, Allah, lama swaktani," which is interpreted, "My God, My God, why hast thou forsaken me?" Now God, God the Father has pouring all His wrath upon His Son when He was on the cross. And he turns back upon him, so that one day we can we can we can be in presence of God on merit of Jesus Christ. On the cross, he was naked. You look look at the man. What what he does to the God when when in Genesis when man was naked, the human the the Adam and and Eve was naked. God made the covering for them. But man, what what he did for for our Lord. They made him naked, and Bible says in Psalm twenty-two, seventeen, eighteen, I may tell all my bones; they look and stare upon me. They parted my garment among them and cast lot upon my vesture. He has to stand. That he has to. He was in the cross in presence of his mother, naked, ashamed, because. So that we we don't have to be ashamed one day, when we when we go and stand before the presence of God. You know, Jesus said all 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 his uh, in the gospel. I'm the I'm I'm, I'm the living water and the fountain living water. And on, on the cross he was thirst. Psalm twenty two fifteen says, "My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaved to my jaws, and Thou hast brought me into the dust of death." His his tongue was looking for little moisture, little water, in his mouth. Think of that. This this God who created the firmament and 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 the water thereof and everything, and he is 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 thirsty, and they mocked him with the vinegar. This God of heaven and earth is thirsty because the place where where we meant to go. The place. The, the, and, and we read account in in uh, in Luke chapter fifteen where the rich man went. There was torment and there was no water there. He he took that thirst. He was thirsty because so that we don't have to thirst when we accept him as our savior. You know Jesus Christ, based on all that what he did for us, he asked us this question: Do you love me? And if you love me, keep my commandments. Matthew chapter twenty-two, verse thirty-four to forty. 
You know, there was a Pharisee and scribe asked him a question. The question was, which is the greatest commandment, Master? And Jesus brought all the 713 commandments, roughly 713 commandments, to just brought it to, bring it down to only two commandments there. And he said, and Jesus said, and said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord, thy God, with all thine heart, with all thine soul, with all thine mind. And this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto him, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and prophet. So hang doesn't mean that uh, if we keep those two commandments, you don't have to keep all. Hang means those all other 713 commandments support these two commandments. So it's like a hanger on the, on the coat hanger and all the commandments is just um, underneath them, the supporting this, these two commandments. If you go to First Timothy chapter, five, chapter 1 verse 5, so Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And second commandment was, the, the commandment was, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. First was, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. So this is, First Timothy chapter 1 verse 5 says, the end of the commandments, the end of the law is where the law finishes, is the charity of pure heart. The charity begins. The charity of the pure heart and of the good conscience and of a faith unfeigned. What is charity? Charity by definition is the love of God shed abroad in our heart by Holy Ghost and charity is outflow of the love of God. If you're praising God that, that is the love of God. That, that, that Jesus Christ, the, the Holy Ghost will living inside you, just wanting to praise God. This is a supernatural. Like, like I, I love my father, that is a natural, but I love somebody who I don't get along, that is a charity. It's supernatural. And the question again comes to mind that do we love Jesus Christ? Do you love Jesus Christ? And if we love Jesus Christ, then what, what, how are we living our life? Are we keeping his commandment? If we love Jesus Christ, I do please him what, what pleases him. Shall we go to, um, we, we go to the Bible and find out what pleases Jesus Christ? If it pleases him to be witness and pray and Bible study, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Wear right and go to church and do get along with everything which is which is Bible says. And and after all that thing, what, what Jesus Christ got from that? After all that beating and after all that suffering, what Jesus Christ got from there? And, and a lot of people say nothing. He came from his father and he went back to his father. He got his wound in his hand. And one, only one person in heaven at this time, and when, when we go to heaven, we'll see only one person. He carried his body, that the same body which he, which he had with the wound in his hand to the heaven, that's what he took with him. And what he got from there is nothing. But if you go to Psalm chapter 22, but there is something which he, which he gained from all this. Psalm chapter 22, we'll go to two places only and then we... We I'll try to conclude this. Psalm chap chapter 22, verse 30 and 31. So this is what Jesus got from all this, what he, what he did here. A seed shall serve him. It shall be counted to the Lord for generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born that he had done this. So now, what 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 Jesus Christ? You you see in in in, in the Bible you see uh, there is a generation of Adam, generation of Noah, the generation of David, but now Je Jesus Christ didn't have generation, but now he had generation. He had a seed and a generation which is saved by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. Go to go to Revelation. That's our last stop. Go to Revelation. There's heavenly host praising Jesus Christ.
Revelation chapter 6. No, actually, in Revelation chapter 5. Yeah, Revelation chapter 5. Verse 11. So now John is giving you this account to us where, where he saw in verse 11 and, and I saw I, and I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them were 10,000 ten, ten, times 10,000 and, and thousand of thousands. So these are the, these are the these are angels which are created for the purpose of praising and giving thanks to Jesus Christ. But look at uh, verse 9. There, there are people like us who are sinners. They had no place in heaven. It was so holy place. And we, we, we sing a song, we sang a song, which is a new song. And this angel don't know the song. Verse 9 says that this, they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. You know, for the angel to be there is because they, 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 they deserve to be there, they're holy. And for us to be there in, in praising and thanking Jesus Christ, it, it, it costs Lord, Lord Jesus Christ everything, but it's, it's worth it. And the, the, the new song is, which nobody knows, we, we will sing one day this song and praising and thanking our Lord Jesus Christ because he is he's worthy of it. And that's the, that's the message we have, you know, the that we, we live the commandment which Jesus Christ wants us to live a life which is pleasing to him because that's the, that's, the, that's the evidence of our love for our Savior because he is, he is worthy of all honor, all praises and our walk with him. That's why the Bible says again and again, Holy Spirit says, walk in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit so you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for your mercy and your kindness and your goodness, Lord. I'm so grateful for, for all, the, all, all we read in the Bible, Lord, how great, how merciful you are and what you did for, the, for this mankind to save us from this eternal damnation in lake of fire and burn there forever and ever, Lord. We're so grateful for that. Help us, Lord, as we gather here, Lord, to, for the praise and thanksgiving night. Help us to open our heart to you, Lord, and praise you, thank you for how good, how gracious, how might, how merciful you are to us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We thank you for, for loving us first, and we're so grateful for that. Ask in your holy name, pray. Amen. Let's have two mics, and you can 